STI Duty 1 4.0 40 caliber shooting Winchester 180 grain ammunition 25 yards we'll start with a silhouette yeah 12 inch next uh, way on the left now yeah, let's do the 10 inch to the left of the uh, my right of the silhouette can we do an 8 inch from here yes we can can we hit the center of that white torso my gosh, it'll hit it. How about, can I get it back at 25 yards? Eh, let's give it one more try. Still got one left. Got to get that plate back. There we go. Part 14 of the Great Affordable 1911 series begs the question, can a $700 1911 made in the Philippines hold its own against a gun that costs twice as much and is made in Texas in the good old United States of America. You know Riders Range is going to have to try to answer that question and we will and you probably won't get the complete answer until you get to the end of the video. So we have a Rock Island Armory TAC 4.0 in 40 caliber Smith & Wesson. So the Rock Island Armory is going to go up against an STI Duty 1. Now STI pretty much got out of the single stack business a few years ago until they came out with the Staccato C earlier this year. It's been several years ago. Uh, they were uh, probably equal between their single stack and their double stack. The Duty 1 line, uh, you've already seen one of those in part 5 of the Great Affordable 1911 series when we actually put a Duty 1 5.0 light up against another Rock Island Armory. Nine, uh, those were in 9mm. And that wasn't much of a competition in that one. The uh, Duty 1 light was uh, far and away the better gun of, of those two. Here, um, these guns are feature for feature pretty similar guns. And again, the, uh, they don't make the Duty 1 anymore, but uh, when it was in the catalog, this is about a $1,500 gun. The Rock Island Armory, you can find uh, these uh, tacks on the, the new tack series is a little bit different than this one, that which is a couple of years old. Uh, but you can find them all day long, pretty much for under $700. The grips obviously are, are different looking at them. The TAC, uh, Rock Island Armory TAC comes with G10 grips. The STI Duty 1 comes with its, its own proprietary grips. However, I much prefer to have uh, the G10s that are very, actually very similar to the Rock Island Armories. These are made by Lock, and I really like these grips. And most of the time when I shoot this gun, it's got the Lock grips on it. For this video only, it's got the original uh, STI grips. Texture is kind of unique on these. In fact, that's, that basic texture pattern is uh, carried through on other parts of the gun, which brings us to the front strap of each of these. The STI Duty 1 has, uh, I'm not sure really what you'd call this here. It's, it's, it's square type knobs. It's, it's almost like flat top pyramids. Whereas the Rock Island Armory just has striations on the front. And um, so far they, they work. They aren't, aren't as grippy obviously as the STIs. Flip them over to the other side and you'll find that the Rock Island Armory is checkered in the back. It's a fairly fine checkering. It, uh, I'm not sure if this is 25 or 30 lines. It feels like it might be 25 line per inch checkering. Whereas the uh, STI Duty 1 has the stippling on the back that's uh, again very similar to the rest of the uh, of the grip. Flipping them over though it's uh, it's definitely a different ball game down here. The STI Duty 1 has your typical uh, light chamfering on the inside of the magwell. The Rock Island Armory again for a sub $700 gun actually comes with the magwell. Now this is not uh, a mainspring housing uh, one-piece magwell. This actually is a separate magwell that's not directly attached to the mainspring housing. Definitely gives you something more to, to funnel a magazine into. Sights are different on these guns also. The Rock Island Armory comes with a red fiber optic front sight and a two dot rear to give you the, the three dot type of profile. Uh, however, this sight is adjustable for uh, windage and for elevation. Although I will mention that the, the sight adjustments on uh, the Rock Island are, even though it's an LPA sight, is still 
uh, a fairly coarse adjustment compared to the adjustments on the uh, on the duty one and again this uh, gun is adjustable for uh, windage and for uh, elevation the front side oh the back side on this is just plain black by the way it is serrated which is nice and, I, and if you've watched my other videos you know that i actually prefer for accuracy i prefer black on black sights and that's what we get in the front just a plain black serrated post in the front good sight picture on uh, this gun for for accurate shooting i definitely like it uh, even though there's not a huge definition between the uh, the front of the rear sight on this uh, it's really good for precision type shooting whereas the Rock Island Armory and you know my thoughts on three dot sights by now uh, that front fiber optic does have a tendency to kind of wash out in the uh, the sunlight makes it a little difficult to get a, uh, a good clear sight picture with that now the uh, the sight of the duty one I've got cranked down as far as it'll go you'll see there's just a little bit of play yet where the sight will move down farther and if I could crank this all the way down to where it's flush to the frame then that would drop the group down uh, where it needs to be uh, at least pretty close to it. It's shooting a little bit high at 15 yards as you'll see uh, the, the Rock Island Armory was uh, better centered but I can't get that uh, sight adjustment screw into the next notch to, to crank that sight down so that's as far as this is going to go down so that means that I really need to be shooting um, a, a low six o'clock hold in order to be getting anywhere near center with this gun. Front cocking serrations are fairly subtle on the uh, uh, on the duty one. Uh, rear cocking serrations are uh, yeah that, that's controversial. Do you like that pattern or do you like the, the more traditional? Uh, the difference is I mean these work they're they're nice and grippy and they do match the uh, the rest of the uh, of the duty one treatment on this particular gun whereas the rock island has no front serrations the rear serrations are very similar to your original 1911 where they're vertical as opposed to matching the angle of the grip and as long as we're on the slides there's a, a nice plain slide on the right now earlier rock islands had billboards on them and, and again you've heard my thoughts on that in fact i believe that the one we had in part five was uh, fairly pronounced uh, all you see on this is in the back of the slide on the left side you do see the rock island logo uh, on the bottom of the dust cover however it does say that this is made in the philippines First up, sti on the other hand just has the texas uh, STI logo on the right side and duty one 4.0 on the left and again it says 4.0 but this is actually a full commander size barrel at uh, four and a quarter inches and speaking of barrels the STI is a um, even though it has a full length guide rod it uh, does have a bushing barrel and uh, the takedown on this, I'll, I'll show you here in just a minute, is a little bit, uh, is interesting. This barrel is obviously not flush cut, nor is it crowned. Whereas on the Rock Island Armory, it is, by the way, these guns are unloaded, have been safety inspected. On the Rock Island, you get a full length guide rod, but it's a bull barrel. And while it's not quite flush, with the uh, with the slide it is nicely crowned which is a nice interesting touch again on a $700 gun which does bring us to the takedown and uh, normally I don't get into takedowns on these videos but these two guns take down entirely different now with a full length guide rod a lot of times you take your handy dandy bent paper clip and put it in a hole in the guide rod but um, just looking at this lock back you can't find a hole so it gets challenging on this particular gun to have to actually bring the slide back farther than normal and try while you're holding it to get the paper clip or your takedown tool into that hole and it's even more difficult when I'm looking at it backwards on the camera. All right, so once you get it in the hole, you can let the slide go forward and from there it's pretty pretty typical takedown and the slide rod does come out in the bushing with takedown tool intact and while I've got this apart something else that's very nice in uh, this class of gun 
and that is a ramped barrel. This is not polished quite as nice as the STI, but it's nice having a ramped barrel. Typical in uh, in nine millimeters these days. Uh, not typical at all in 45s. Um, I only have the 240s in 1911s here, so I don't know if that's going to be a typical feature or not. STI, on the other hand, when you pull it back, you first look at it, and you look at that guide rod, and you say, hey, can the handy-dandy Springfield tool work on this? And the answer is, not going to happen. It doesn't fit in there. That's, the, that's what you look at to start with, but since this is a bushing gun, then it's just a matter of taking it down like any other bushing 1911 there we go and again this does have a nicely polished feed ramp for the 40 caliber barrel Okay, both of these guns are Series 70 guns. There's no firing pin block in either one of them. Both have uh, memory bumps or speed bumps, whatever you want to call them, on the beaver tail. The uh, Rock Island Armory has a couple of grooves in it, not a big deal. Which $700 Rock Island Armory has a fairly nice extractor to slide fit and a fairly nice slide to frame fit. Um, yeah, I'd, I've seen guns that cost more made in the United States that didn't fit as well as that. There's virtually no movement slide to frame, virtually no movement barrel to slide. So it's a, actually a very well fitted gun. The STI has an even better fitted, excuse me, extractor to slide. The, the frame to slide fit on this gun is also very, very nicely done. Even better certainly than that, uh, the Rock Island. There is no play between the frame and the slide, and working this thing, almost it, it, it feels almost like a custom gun. The Rock Island Armory, not quite so much. It doesn't feel rough. It just doesn't feel quite that uh, glass smooth as, as the STI. I'll also mention here that the STI Duty 140 has a rail on it. Um, it makes it a little more difficult to find holsters that'll fit it and I don't find any reason to hang um, a rail on a 4-inch commander. On the other hand, if I was still working in uniform on the street, I'd be hanging a light on it. We didn't have that option when I was uh, working back uh, what seems like centuries ago now. Triggers, again, are a little different on this. The, again, these guns have been safety inspected and they are empty. Trigger on the Rock Island has a fair amount of of up and down play so it's not fitted as precisely as one would expect but it is a it's, it's a nice trigger and uh, this trigger actually breaks cleanly at three pounds eight ounces nice reset and clean break a little bit of take up but again, not objectionable. I've seen worse, but I have seen lots better. It's that up and down play that tells me it's not as finely fitted. It does have a, an over travel stop in it and uh, a decent trigger, surprisingly, again, for a $700 gun. Uh, the STI is a little disappointing in that STIs typically have a plastic face trigger. Uh, you'd think on this quality of a gun or at least on this price range it would be all metal but um, now that that's how STI runs it and again I've got several STIs and they've all got plastic triggers but I haven't had any problem with them again this does have an over travel stop in it it's a little bit of take up oh the uh, vertical movement is none this is a very nicely fitted trigger a little bit of take up very very clean break at a nice consistent three pounds five ounces short defined reset and again a very very clean break nice trigger on the uh, STI thumb safety on the STI and it, it's a good positive feel to it the Rock Island Armory has an ambidextra safety again $700 gun with an ambi safety on it and it's a very positive safety in fact it's more positive than it is on the uh, on the STI only complaint on this is the uh, the actual width of the safety levers uh, is narrower than 
what you find on the SDI, I shoot with a uh, high grip with my thumb on top of safety. This doesn't give me quite the same purchase as I would get on um, many other 1911s. They do work well. They do ring steel at uh, uh, at all the way up to 50 yards. The SDI Duty 1 was um, hitting the 5 inch center on a torso at 25 yards and uh, the Rock Island Armory was still pretty good at 25. It wasn't quite as good at 50. Um, not quite sure why because it wasn't shooting that much uh, higher. Both these guns are shooting in about the same place, uh, about the same group set at 15 yards, although I guess technically the group on the Rock Island Armory might be just a hair wider uh, spaced at 15 yards than the group on the uh, STI that may have, have something to do with the, the difference in accuracy at 50 yards. But I'm, I'm very pleased with how they both shoot. Uh, they are a little bit different in weight, however. The STI Duty 1 loaded with um, 8 rounds of 180 grain 40 caliber ammunition in the magazine plus one more in the chamber uh, weighs out at uh, 43.7 ounces. The Rock Island Armory, same ammunition, weighs out at 46.1. So about two and a half uh, ounces heavier for the, the Rock Island. Some of that might be due to the um, the mainspring, excuse me, to the uh, to the magwell. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why. That's a, it's a little bit heavier, but not that extra couple ounces isn't really noticeable. So we're getting back to that original question. Can a $700 gun made in the Philippines hold its own against a $1,500 gun made in Texas? And the answer is, yeah, it can. It's almost hard to justify spending twice as much to get the uh, the STI, although uh, right now, I, in fact, I just uh, before we started taping, I looked online and I can't find a Duty One uh, for sale used on the market right now. Uh, every now and then, one will pop up, and um, if it pops up at a good price, uh, then it's a worthwhile gun to get. But in the absence of finding an STI Duty One 40 caliber. That Rock Island at $700 is a very, very nice workable gun. So it's really tough to pick a winner on this. Uh, I like the um, the feel of the trigger on the STI a little better. The the fit uh, the fit on the STI is a little nicer. The accuracy is just a little nicer. I like the sights just a little better. Uh, it's just hard to justify spending twice as much money for it, especially when you can get an ambidextrous safety and a fiber optic front sight and a magwell if you like all of those, uh, and not have a plastic trigger on that Rock Island Armory, which comes with G10 grips, so you don't have to spend another uh, $50 to replace the grips. Um, still, I think the STI just barely edges out that Rock Island. It's a much closer match than it was back in uh, Part 5 when we put the STI uh, Duty 1 5.0 light 9mm against the Rock Island 9mm. Uh, that no contest uh, here again it's really really close so this is going to wrap up the commander series the uh, next part goes into the uh, officer size frames and we'll start with the 45s again there and this is the only 40s that we have in the entire uh, great affordable 1911 series we always appreciate a thumbs up if you like these videos it uh, helps get us noticed a little bit more on YouTube helps build that subscriber base which does bring me to please subscribe or pass this information on to uh, other people in, uh, in your circle who are into firearms and let them know about Riders Range. Uh, the more subscribers we can get, the more we can get the rankings up, the more our videos will get noticed. Not that we're making any money on these and uh, we probably never will, but that's okay. We just have fun doing them. Before I forget about it, um, the uh, Great Affordable 1911 Series playlist is uh, on our website, ridersrange.com. We do appreciate comments. Uh, if you have comments on this video, please leave them uh, in the section below. If you want to comment on anything else, make any suggestions on what you'd like to see on Riders Range, uh, send a comment to info at ridersrange.com and we will respond to all emails. And uh, we thank you for visiting Riders Range. STI Duty 1 40 caliber 4 inch. Worked a little high at 15 yards on the bullseye. We're going to see how it works at 12 yards. It was shooting a little high with the Winchester. 180 grain ammo. Give it a try. Not bad shooting little gun.
Rock Island Armory TAC 40 caliber 4 inch shooting Winchester 180 grain. She was right on it, 15 yards, and see how it works on the plates.